We are Michelle and Brian Coleman. After years of dreaming about it, in 2017, we took our life of adventure to a new level by walking the Camino de Santiago, from St. Jean Pied de Port to Santiago, and then on to Finisterra. Follow along on this four-part series as we talk about how we prepare now, what we've learned along the way, why we keep coming back, and what we'll be doing differently on our fifth Camino in the summer of 2023. This is the final video of our four-part series about the Camino de Santiago. And today we are gonna to talk to you about the five things that we are doing differently this summer on our fifth Camino. Oh my gosh, does that mean we've learned something from the last four Caminos? Well, we've talked about the lessons that we've learned. We've talked about all of the other things, the tips that we have for you. Today, we are gonna talk about the five things that we are doing differently this time on our Camino. Yeah, if you haven't watched the other uh, parts in this four part series, make sure you go back and check them out. We are gonna link them in this video. Number one. Number one. We are gonna use day packs. <gasps> Gasp. I'm a little nervous about, um, I think it, this is hard. I was watching a, a YouTube video today about the fact that, um, you know, it was like five rules of um, the Camino and one thing said no judgment. And I thought, that is the hardest part. I have to get over the fact that people are going to judge me us in turn for using day packs. Number one, I always say, I don't care if you're judging me, but you, we all know that you feel it inside of you when someone's judging you. However, if we, if we're going to like, I don't know, um, encompass, take on everything we've said we've learned so far, then I need to take on that lesson. And that regardless of whether or not people judge us, I know that our Camino is going to be better because we're using day packs. Number one, the com it's just gonna be more enjoyable. It's true, and we're not using this as an excuse to take more stuff. No. We're really still taking about the same things that we would have taken had we been using full backpacks, but we've decided two day packs with a small suitcase. It's gonna be a medium carry-on size suitcase, um, and that's just gonna allow us to have a couple of extra things. It's gonna allow us to have a little bit more technology with us uh, that's gonna make our videos better, so that's something we're looking forward to. But it's really just going to be, it's about our creature comfort of well, just just having less stuff on our body for the day to day. Yeah, we hike in the middle of the summer. It is so hot that you're already dealing with, when you're hiking in the heat, you're already dealing with dehydration comes quicker. And it's just, it takes it out of you walking in the heat. I suffer from a little bit of low back pain. I have a mild case of scoliosis in my low back. And so the backpack weight really um, hurts my back. And so between that and the heat, and as we heard from um, when we saw a nurse in, 2019 and she said you're on holiday why are you doing this to yourself and i'm trying to take that in and remind ourselves that what we're doing is though challenging it is our holiday our vacation well and a saying that i've heard before and that i really like is that on the camino pain is inevitable your feet are gonna hurt, your back's gonna hurt, you're gonna have aches and pains. However, suffering is your choice, and we're just choosing not to suffer quite so much this time. I wanna have a holiday. Number two. The Camino Finisterra. So we have walked the Camino Finisterra on our 2017 Camino. We walked from Santiago to Finisterra. In 2019, we planned to walk again, but that was when Michelle was having severe foot issues. So we ended up busing to Muxia and then busing on to Finisterra and we did not walk that time. This time we are gonna walk the triangle. Well, that's the plan. The plan, right? <laughs> is, the plan is we're gonna walk the triangle, but we're gonna do it 
backwards, I guess. I mean, there's not really a right way or a wrong way to walk it. We are walking from Santiago to Muxia, and then we're walking from Muxia to Finisterra. Then once we're in Finisterra, our pilgrimage is officially done. Finito. <laughs> <laughs> Completo. Uh, and then from Finisterra, we're taking a bus back to Santiago, and then we're renting a car to finish out just some tourist time in Portugal and yeah. south of Spain. But how is this different? Like, so explain So that it's different because we've walked the Finisterra route uh, from Santiago to Finisterra, but not from Santiago to Muxia, which part of it obviously overlaps, but it is a different route. And then of course, walking from Muxia to Finisterra, which not very many people do. That's a, a relatively uncommon route. It's well marked, we're told, um, and we're doing it in two days uh, to make it a little more pleasant. But that's going to be a big difference for us. I'm excited because one, in 2017, we did go, you know, like you said, from Santiago to Finisterre. So we've had that. And that walk to the coast. Oh, it's, it's so beautiful. It's beautiful. And I feel like there's just that energy and excitement. Like you're like, I, we, we just accomplished walking to Santiago. You feel like you're on top of the world. You can do anything. So that's exciting all on its own. And then to switch it up a little bit by going to Muxia is very exciting. But then um, we've done the Camino Portuguese. If you follow us along in 2019, we did the Camino Portuguese and that's when we started our YouTube journey. But walking along the coast mm. in 2019 made us realize how much we love walking by the water. So I think there's a lot of excitement and energy into the last two days of our Camino. We'll be walking along the coast and I feel like it's just gonna be putting a bow on this beautiful, Camino journey that we've had thus far. Number three, the third thing that we're doing differently this time. I feel like I need to take a deep breath. We are doing more shared accommodations. Now, as I say, Shared accommodations we've done a lot of. Well, technically, we've never had a shared accommodation. Well. We've tried. We've tried. We've never had a shared room in an accommodation. And and honestly, it happened accidentally. On, in 2017, we had planned to stay in albergues with shared rooms. And what happened is when we got there, they said, oh, you're a couple, we have this private room, here you go. And we didn't argue. And we did, <laughs> we did not argue. And then we honestly just got used to it and we said that a private room was lovely. And it, and it is, it has a lot of perks to it. What we found out is that we got so comfortable on the Camino Francis that we ended up booking more private accommodations, and therefore we lost a little bit of that communal experience. Um, we had some of it because, it, again, in 2017, it happened accidentally. But then on the Camino Portuguese, mm. a lot of times it was hard to find more albergues with shared accommodations. And then in 2022, when we did the Via Francigena. We tried. We tried really we hard to get bunk rooms. And it was, we had, one? No, we had several places. No, but I think we had But then one we were actual, the only people there. Well, yeah, we actually, we had one room where there were three beds and it was just the two of us. So there's that. Um, so in the end, we have not had this experience. We are going to this time. We are gonna have shared, it. more shared accommodations. I think it's just gonna have a big impact on our overall Camino. And that's gonna lead us into number four. The fourth thing we're gonna do different on this Camino is? Communal meals. So going along with the shared bunk rooms and that sense of community that we're really looking for on this Camino, we wanna have more opportunities where we're doing those communal meals in the albergues, as opposed to sometimes we got very comfortable just the two of us going off and finding a restaurant and being quiet and being kind of on our own. And we enjoy our time together. And that's one of the things we love about being on the Camino. Well, I think sometimes you have to get away from the, the crowds, the crowd. And we have some of that uh, planned. Like we have a Mich Michelin star oh. restaurant that we're gonna go to. So, so we have some of that where we know we're gonna be alone and we know we need that. 
but I think intentionally staying at places that serve communal dinners. And on top of that, Good. I'm also really making an effort to get into the kitchen myself <laughs> because I want some of these abuelas to teach me their recipes and I'm gonna bring those to you. Let's hope. I don't I know, what, do I don't it know so how it's gonna happen, but I think that's gonna be a really great experience for us this year. that we're gonna do different this Camino is that we are going to stay a bit off stage. Now, what does that mean? Staying off stage um, means every guidebook that you look at has specific stages. Start in this place and end in this place today. Yes. And then the next day walk to this place. And in the John Brierley book, which is what a lot of people use, there are specific stages that everyone stays at. And, and I will say that's different for every book. We've looked at probably three or four different books, but our goal this year was looking back at the Caminos that we've done before, what are some of the places that we really want to stay at that we didn't stay at before? For because example, they were off stage. Yeah, for example, we walked right through the town of Sahagoon, and this time we're gonna stay in Sahagoon. I think that whether it's staying off stage or it's just staying in different villages. I think that's the most important piece is that we're trying to find different villages. Like we'll stay in Burgos, Leon, because we love the cities. Not Us. every not every pilgrim does, yeah. but we do. So another city that we really loved was Astorga and it is on stage and we are staying there because we just love that city so much. Mm -hmm. But there are other places like Melide that we didn't stay at. And I think this time we're gonna be yeah, making gonna, a stop there. We're gonna stop there. We wanna the get other some thing, popo. The other thing is that we're gonna stay um, in, di we're, we're making sure that regardless of whether we're staying in the same village or not, we're trying to stay in different accommodations than what we've stayed at before. I think we only have a few accommodations that overlap just to provide, the goal here is to provide a fresh experience to something that we've done before to provide a fresh perspective. And I think that's something that you could take with you long outside of the Camino. Whenever you do a job for a lot of years, I mean, I've been teaching for 25 years. You've been teaching for more than that. We've been doing the same thing for so many years, but our job is about keeping it fresh for the students. And, and so therefore, I think we can really apply that to the Camino, and that is creating a fresh experience with something that we've done before, because we wanna bring it to, not just to you, but we wanna really take that experience well, on ourselves. Because we love changing up those adventures. We don't wanna do the same thing. We hope you've enjoyed this four part series. We have really enjoyed thinking about what we've learned over these four Caminos and we've really enjoyed thinking about what's coming up. We leave two months from the day that we're recording this video, but when you're watching it, we'll probably already be gone. We'll probably already be on the Camino. And so, hey, another great experience about this for us is that we've been working with a student intern. So shout out to Noah, who's done all the editing on this video, who's really grown a lot and shown uh, a lot of really diligent and hard work putting these videos together. So thank you, Noah. Teaching doesn't just happen in the classroom. It happens during our summer. It happens as we help students grow their skill set. It's all about providing for the next generation. So we hope you have enjoyed this four part series where we've talked about our best preparation tips. Uh, the five lessons that we've learned along the Camino. The five reasons we keep coming back. And of course today, the things that we're doing differently for this next trip. Make sure that you hit the like button down below. Give us some comments. Tell us uh, what you wanna see in our upcoming videos along the Camino de Santiago and uh, make sure you check out all of our adventures. We love taking an adventure, but most importantly, we love bringing you along as you take an adventure with us. See you next video.